Hello guys and welcome to TGM the Game Nerd the Shore. I talk about roleplay games and today we're going to be playing Sonic Adventure 2. In the last episode, if you don't remember, we went ahead and learned that Eggman might have taken six of the Chaos Emeralds to outer space. He also used a bunch of energy and blew up half the moon as a sort of warning shot. And so in this episode, we're entering Eggman's pyramid base in order to see if we can somehow get to space from there. Whoop. Sorry, Omo Chow. I haven't even mentioned Omo Chow yet. Uh, Omo Chow is a character who was introduced in this game, uh, which is basically like what Tikal was in Sonic Adventure 1, uh, where he's so sort of supposed to be like this guide character, but he's more like Navi from Ocarina of Time, uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time, and the fact that fanbase finds him so annoying. Anyways, I'll get to that in a second. Speaking of characters from Adventure 1, this robot might, right here might look very familiar to you. Uh, this is, I want to see if I can see it's... I can't really see what number that is. Is that, e is that 1000? I'm not sure. Uh, also, bounce bracelet. If you press B while in the air, you'll bounce. But these robots are modeled after E10... E102, I think it was? Codenamed Gamma. A playable character from the first Sonic Adventure. I... I am very ashamed that I didn't remember uh, Gamma's number at first, but... Eh. Seven-year-old me would have yelled at me right there. Not really, but, you know. I'm a huge nerd is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool to see that Gamma, in a way, sort of makes an appearance in this game. Also, blink and you miss it. There's a big the cat cameo right there. Uh, speaking of ways that Gamma sort of makes an appearance in this game, Tails' gameplay is not at all like, uh, you know, Tails' gameplay from the first game. It is much more like Gamma's gameplay in the fact that it's, you know, a mech stage where you have to go around and shoot a bunch of different enemies. Uh, I think I personally like Gamma's gameplay from Adventure 1 a bit more, just because that felt a lot more, I don't know, a lot less clunky in my opinion, but I definitely see why people would like uh, Tails' gameplay a lot more in this game right here. I, I personally like, I know that this might... Uh, not really upset some people, but a lot of people will disagree with. I personally like having a much more relaxing time playing through games, and I know that's a bit weird considering I'm playing Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic games are supposed to be, you know, high strong and I got under there just in just in time. But yeah, Sonic games are typically supposed to be like super high energy, but I mean more of like I enjoy having a more easier time going through games. Uh and you know, if I enjoy a game a lot, I'll start playing on harder difficulties. But yeah, I don't know, that's that's just me. I, it's mostly because I'm not the best at video games, uh, even though my entire channel is based around them and I play video games a lot, I'm still not really the best at them. So I personally enjoy whenever I play a game that has a difficulty setting, I usually play on easy first and then, you know, once I fall in love with the game, which I, you know, probably will, then I'll start playing on much harder difficulties to challenge myself. But I always like, you know, experiencing the story at first. Uh, but I do believe this is the end of the level, so there we go. Huh, no problem. Looks like we're heading toward the center of the base. That egghead sure loves mechanical things, doesn't he? I'll bet he has one or two spaceships lying around here somewhere. The door is locked. We need a key to get in there. No problem. We can find it. Right, Knuckles? What? Why do I have to find the key? We're counting on you, buddy. The world's greatest treasure hunter. Stage 12, the death chamber. 
this is where the treasure hunting stages can start to get sort of annoying. Basically, there are three different sectors throughout this level. There's the red, blue, and uh, green sections. Also, also yeah, Omo Chao sort of explained uh, the gloves there. But this level is split up into three different sections, and you have to travel through all of them uh, probably multiple times to get all of the different keys here. Also, it's the first time we're getting something other than the Emerald Shards, which is definitely different from Sonic Adventure 1, considering that we, I'm pretty sure, only collected, you know, uh, Master Emerald Shards in that game when it came to treasure hunting. Uh, but yeah, back on topic with Omo Chow. He basically became a staple in the series. He reappeared in Sonic Heroes, uh, in the writers' games. Uh, but he reappeared a lot, and his most recent sort of appearance is in the visual novel Mur *The Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog*, uh, where he's on the where spoilers, I guess, for that game. Uh, go ahead and skip to the top of the screen if you don't want spoilers. Omo Chao is on the run from the police for medical malpractice. Uh, that that's real. I'm not joking. I don't even. I don't. I don't know if that game is canon. The uh, Steam page uh, says that he isn't. Um, which I guess since I'm just going through this level and it's probably going to take me a while. I guess I have a lot of time to talk about canonicity in Sonic the Hedgehog games. Uh, Specifically, which games are canon and which games aren't. Uh, if you know me, you'll know that I love timelines and seeing how different games connect to each other. So you know that I'm probably passionate about, uh, you know, which Sonic games are canon. And recently, uh, I believe uh, there were a couple people that got hired to be, like, sort of timeline experts over at Sonic Team. Uh, and crud, that was my fault, sorry. And so recently, uh, Ian Flynn, writer of IDW Comics and uh, Sonic Frontiers, uh, you know, he's been talking about which games are canon and which games are not, and before I, you know, start talking about this, uh, remember that uh, Ian Flynn is not the one making all the decisions here. He's just a guy working for them. Uh, so he's not making big decisions about which games are canon and which games aren't. But uh, yeah, anyways, recently uh, we know that there are, there is like a sort of list and people are, you know, communicating each with each other on which games are and aren't canon because they're trying to sort of build up more of a story in the future. Uh, but yeah, as we continue, we're probably going to see a bit more of a story, like a, a bigger overarching story, more than we've seen before. Uh, you know, probably a lot more like the adventure games and stuff like that, where we see, you know, references to previous games, and of course with that, you need to come to a consensus uh, within your team about which games are canon and which games are not. And so they really seem like they're making a real effort to, you know, come to a decision. Sonic Labyrinth was recently declared to be not canon, uh, as well as Sonic Pinball Party, and then possibly uh, Sonic Blast and Sonic Drift games as well. Uh, but yeah, Ian Flynn has a podcast with his friend where they answer a bunch of questions from fans of their work, and, you know, it's really interesting stuff to listen to, so I guess that's a sort of shout-out. I don't really like doing shout-outs unless it's something that I really enjoy, and I do really enjoy those guys' work, so yeah, go check them out. But yeah, for those who aren't really into 
Sonic lore and stuff like that, what what I've been talking about w throughout the past few minutes probably seems just like random rambling. Uh, so I guess I'll get back onto a more, you know, sensical topic because you know I do want to talk about things that I'm more passionate passionate about, but I do also don't want to completely alienate my audience. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, one thing that I do like about uh, sort of internet culture that we've so sort of been shifting towards is a lot of people have been getting a lot of love, especially in recent years when they talk about something that they love more than something that they hate. Because back in like the early 2010s on YouTube, people really enjoyed you know, like Angry Video Game Nerd and, you know, other similar reviewers and, you know, Let's Plays of people playing games and, like, watching them, you know, rage and get angry at it. But recently, uh, a lot of people uh, have been enjoying videos where people talk about a topic that they're passionate about, and that's why video essays have become such a big thing as of recently, considering you know, and people are liking, you know, long-form content as well, because, you know, people, how do I word this correctly? People have been enjoying long-form content, like video essays, uh, because it's a lot more fun, at least for me, and it seems for a lot of other people, when, you know, people are you know, happy and expressing happy emotions, because in an age like today, like, you know, with the pandemic and stuff like that, and, you know, it's kind of just hard with uh, some things today to fully remain positive, and I believe that's sort of why people have gravitated towards more positive content where, where it's full of passion and, you know, seeing people express something and, you know, learn new things about something that they've never learned before. Whereas back in the day, it was more like, you know, you clicked on a Let's Play to either watch people get angry at a game or get scared at a game. Uh, and, you know, I'm not saying that, like, either style is bad. Uh, you like what you like, you know? That sounds like I'm being patronizing or something like that. I genuinely mean, you know, when you watch something, just enjoy whatever you enjoy, but I'm glad to see that it's just one of those things where I'm glad to see that something that I like is getting a lot more attention and praise recently. Like, very often I'll see on different social media platforms people sharing different video essays about, you know, different long-form topics and people talk about just talking about things very passionately. I might be talking in circles here. Point is, I love that these, you know, types of videos have been getting more recognition lately, and makes me happy because I like, you know, videos where people talk about things they like rather than get angry at things they hate. But yeah, back onto a more, uh, I know I said I was gonna get basic, and I, I sort of did with that topic. Where is this last key? But yeah, I sort of was just talking in circles there, because I didn't really know what to say. I am the dark ground. Oh, do I have to... There we go. Very nice. That was tough. Huh? Who's there? What the... A ghost? King Boom Boo is our next boss fight. So this guy... Uh, first thing I want to mention about him... The way that you beat him is, and I always struggled with this when I was a bit younger, but 
You want to wait for him to stop. And then you can run around. When I was younger, what I'd often do, and by the way, you want to dig at his shadow and then start punching him at this next phase right here. What I'd do when I was younger is I would just run after him and just run around and every time he'd turn around and, you know, start chasing after me again. And so I really struggled with this boss fight uh, when I first played through this game. But yeah, you just gotta stay in his sight, still dodge his attacks, but stay in his sight for a little bit. And then once he stops moving, that's when you can fully run around and get him. Uh, in Sonic X, which I haven't seen too much of, but there's this one episode where I believe Amy gets possessed by either him or a ghost similar to him, and you get these screenshots that uh, I remember seeing when I was young and being really freaked out by, and I'm sure it freaked out a lot of kids as well. There's always media like that. Uh, there, there's always stuff like that, I mean, in uh, media mostly intended for children's where, children, where there's that one part uh, that is always talked about, where it's like, dang, this is super spooky, you know? And I guess that was just sort of that. There is a scene like that where it's like, in this game, where it's like, wow, that is surprisingly dark and haunting. And I probably... Funny that I say the word haunting when we're fighting a ghost right now, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's a scene that's sort of like, yeesh, that's dark, and those who have played this game probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, there's sort of two scenes like that, in fact. Whoops. Okay, thankfully I didn't reset his stuff. Sorry. My brain isn't making words right now, not making very- Oh, come on, I thought you stopped there. Okay, there we go. Here's the end of the boss fight. Uh, but there's two sort of scenes where it's just like, Wow, that's pretty dark for something intended for kids. And it's good to have, like, just because something's, like, for kids doesn't mean it can can't have, like, you know, darker elements. Uh... So yeah, moral of the story, I don't know. I can't think of one in time before the results screen. <sighs> that was pretty rough. We did it! Let's go, Amy! Yeah! You little thieves. Did you really think eh? you could Come and get some, Eggman! Sonic! I'm my Just leave it to me! This time, I'll take your life, as well as the Chaos Emerald. I call on you to destroy these pests! Come out, my servant! The Egg Golem. This is a super cool looking boss. So basically he'll slam his hands down. Once he does that, you just want to go ahead and jump around to the back. He'll have these very convenient platforms on him. Whoops. Ow. Okay, he does that attack with his hands, where he just sort of spins around in a circle. And now I believe we can go ahead and jump on his uh, back platforms. And then once you get to the top here, want to uh, homing attack the thing on the top of his head, and then you'll be good. By the way, I think it might be like depending on where you grew up or something like that. But how do you how do you guys personally pronounce uh, Gollum? You know the Thing that this name is, you know, named after. Because when I was growing up, I always pronounced it Golem. Uh, but, you know, then I played uh, the second Zero Escape game, and then I started pronouncing it Golem, and that's probably how it is pronounced, but 
I don't know. I've, I've heard it pronounced both ways, so let me know in the comments what how you pronounce it. Okay, come on. Okay, slam that hand down. Slam that hand down. What attack are you going to do next? Oh. Okay. I spin dashed around to the back side. I don't know why this is confusing me so much this time around. Usually I have a pretty decent time with this, but... I don't know, I'm struggling with it for some reason. Uh, another thing to note, Big the Cat was in that cutscene back there. Uh, if you press A during certain cutscenes, at certain scenes, Big the Cat will appear, and it's hilarious. Um, there might be some serious scenes in this game where he might appear, and in that case I don't think I'll make him appear because if there's something dramatic going on, I don't want Big the Cat popping up out of the sky just to ruin the moment, I guess. There is a very funny example later in the game, though, of... Oh, didn't get a ring there. Might die. Oh, I got a ring just in time, and that'll allow me to go ahead and hop up these platforms. And that's the end of the boss fight. Forgot what I was talking about earlier. That seems to be a running theme with the series. <laughs> Green light launched. Primary engine ignition on. Beginning lift off countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Shuttle lift off. This is the space colony where Eggman is hiding. What the? Is everyone all right? We should be oh, landing no. soon. The hatch doors don't are open. Sweat it, Knuckles. The only thing in the cargo bay are those master emeralds. What do you mean, emeralds. don't sweat it? Right? Land the shuttle and off, let Knuckles. me out. We're gonna crash this thing if you keep that up. Oh no! Don't touch that lever! What's up with that knucklehead anyway? Trying to take over the shuttle. I thought we were toast for sure. Huh? Where did he go now? Looks like he bailed. This place looks deserted, dusty too. This place was shut down about 50 years ago because of a terrible accident. The first Bernoulli spherical space colony called ARC. When it was operational, it was the most advanced research center of its kind. But looking at it now... Now it's an abandoned arc, wouldn't you say? There's not much time left before Eggman fires that weapon again. We've got to hurry. Let's find the cannon and destroy it. Yeah! Someone designed that weapon to be impenetrable from outside attacks. Its defense shields are super strong, so we have to find a way to destroy it from Isn't inside. Isn't that a Chaos Emerald? It looks like it, doesn't it? But in fact, it's a fake one I created after researching the real Emerald. It has the same wavelength and properties, but it's less powerful than the real one. It's designed to reverse the energy field inside the Chaos Emeralds and blow up. It looks so real, even a machine can't tell the difference. I'll find the power supply and destroy it. Sonic, you find the control room, okay? So the plan is, we'll switch the Chaos Emeralds when the machine is stuck, right? I hate you! You guys always leave me behind and have all the fun! We'll have to have that fun in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to go ahead and see if we can go through with the plan with switching out the Chaos Emeralds. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.
，拜拜。